Hi, everybody. So uh, perhaps you are one of the many, many people who follows us or uh, kind of has seen a bunch of DIY gear and thought, man, someday I'm going to get into that. But uh, you just haven't yet for whatever reason. Well, now you're stuck in your house. You might as well get into it. Uh, I'm sitting here in my basement working on some stuff and I thought, hey, I'll go over what my quarantine soldering setup is so that you can put your own together. So I'm also sitting on the creakiest stool of all time. So heads up. Um, so what you need to get your first build under your belt is like really simple. Uh, this is a multimeter. I don't know why I'm sitting here. You don't need it for your first build. So I'm going to put that over here. What you need is a soldering station, uh, soldering iron, but let's say soldering station because I want you to get one of those, um, and wire cutters and some solder. So I'm just going to go over what you need to know about these in order to buy the right one to get started. Um, and it should take me just a couple minutes. So this soldering iron, the idea here is um, they are very cheap now. Uh, it's kind of like condenser mics or guitars. It's like 10 years ago, they cost twice as much and they were half as good. And now you are just spoiled with cheap options. I just want to stress, don't get the cheapest one. Get a station like this, where it has this big external power transformer that then this uh, iron plugs into. Um, anything like that is going to serve you okay. It might say 40 watts, it might say 60 watts. Um, any of those are okay. This uh, Weller here is 40 watts. I've used it for years. I think it was $39 on Amazon. Get something like that and you'll be happy. Get something cheaper than that, and it's like buying a guitar where the action is too high. And so when you're a beginner, you think, oh man, this is even harder than, uh, than it really is. So that's what a cheap iron will do for you. It will make you think that this whole soldering thing is some dark art that you just can't get, whereas a better iron will, uh, will get you over that initial challenge. And then solder. I want you to get 6040 leaded solder. I just clipped this off of a spool, um, but you know, spend 10 bucks on a little spool of solder. 6040 is a thing that you should put into Google or Amazon or whatever. Uh, don't start with lead free solder. It's not as nice to work with basically. So start with tin or leaded 6040 solder. Um, and for the, um, just make sure it's not something too thick. Don't get a big spool that's like for housing wiring. Make sure it's for little electronics uh, work. So look for a photo in the listing or something of someone soldering a circuit board. You don't want uh, the kind that you would use for soldering uh, outlets and that kind of thing. Um, okay, and then wire cutters. Um, this is really key and so cheap. So just five bucks. These are from Hakko, H-A-K-K-O, but it really doesn't matter. It can be generic. The point is that the tips are small and really sharp like this. Uh, you, you might have some already around the house for household wiring that are kind of big and clunky. You don't want to mess with those on a circuit board. It's just going to be frustrating and things won't be as neat. So uh, spend the five bucks to get these. So for adding it up, you know, let's say 40, 50 for the iron, uh, five for the wire cutters and 10 for the solder. So you're in the range of 50 to 60 bucks and you're on your way to build our reamp box or DI box and get that first build under your belt. So there you go. That's my quarantine soldering setup. Uh, go out and build yours now.